meeting. I think we're live. Are we? It says setting up your meeting for YouTube live. Hi, everyone. If we're live, it's Bella and Laura. Hi, we're really excited to be here. Okay, we're definitely live. Fabulous. Well, thank you guys so much for sending in your questions. We have loads to get through today, which is awesome. So hopefully we can just blast through them all. And today's topic is Dr. Johnny Bowden's Metabolic Factor Program, which, Bella, what is the metabolic factor? Great question to start on. Um, so the metabolic factor is an amazing program. There's Laura holding the book. And just as it says there, I think that's the perfect summary. Just 22 days to burn fat and feel fantastic. But truly, so this program is 22 days long, but it also does you know, set you up for lifetime success and teaches you how to kind of go on from the 22 days. And we will discuss that today, but it tells you absolutely everything from what foods to eat, what foods to cut out, when to eat certain foods, when to incorporate carbs. And really it's designed to take you from a sugar burner to a fat burner in just that 22 day period. So it's wonderful. It is wonderful. And one question that we didn't have in our questions, but maybe you could briefly touch on is why does it matter? Why do I not want to be a sugar burner? Well, if you are looking to reach those goals, to lose weight, to feel great, and also not spend your entire day obsessing about food, craving foods, feeling absolutely miserable, then you 100% need to switch from a sugar burner to a fat burner. You will not only feel fantastic, but you will actually get the results that you've been looking for for so long. And you won't feel hangry anymore. Very true. The cravings, the energy will all be stable. You're not going to be like, oh, I'm starving, I'm cranky can't sleep, all of the above. So one of, I'm going to go through, we, you guys sent in so many questions. We have like 20 questions. So we're going to go through them as quickly as we can. Um, is coffee allowed, Bella? Yes. Oh, thank goodness. So, I know probably for sure. <laughs> but yes. So coffee is allowed. A um, few little kind of rubric, I would say, when it comes to coffee. Organic is preferred. One cup a day is preferred preferably before noon, I would say, especially if you're looking to optimize sleep. And very importantly, be mindful of what you're putting in. You know, you can't have your sugary creamer, you know, even the sugar-free creamers that contain like sucralose and things like that. Um, we actually recommend black or we actually have some um, recipes for homemade creamer and also give some suggestions for healthy, dairy-free, sugar-free creamers too. Yes, I'm so glad I can have coffee. Um, now, what about, I don't like counting calories. Do we have to count things like calories on this? No, that's one of the, my favorite parts of the program. It's, you know, you don't have to obsess about numbers. You don't have to count calories, macros, all of that stuff. It really just teaches you how to get in tune with your body and how, you know, to just learn to eat real food. Don't you think, Laura? I think so. And I love, I, all of our programs, just FYI, don't involve counting calories. So get out of that mindset of it. Um, but is this like keto? No. So we do get this question a lot. Um, first of all, I just want to quickly break down what the ketogenic diet actually is, because it's very popular now. And I think a lot of people just think it's low carb, but it's actually so much more than that. Ketogenic is also very high fat and actually moderate to low protein, which is a really big differentiator here. Macros, if you are counting macros and you're on a keto, ketogenic diet, it's going to be something like, you know, 70 uh, percent fat, around 25 percent protein, about 5 percent carbohydrates. So you can see that quite extreme ratio here. As we just mentioned, we don't count macros on TMF, but if we did, they would look very different. So, yes, we do place emphasis on the healthy fats, but also on the protein. Very, very important as part of TMF. And actually, even healthy carbohydrates just in the form of kind of low glycemic vegetables rather than the starchier ones. Also, another factor, and I know Laura will appreciate this one, keto, very heavy on the cheese and the dairy. And we don't recommend dairy in those 22 days. And we also have these fun things called carb feasts, which lead to this other question, which is how is this different just from traditional carb cycling? Oh. Sure. So I think there are a few similarities um, to traditional carbohydrate cycling, mainly just the fact that we do implement this wonderful carb feast, which is a very exciting part of TMF. But I would say that metabolic factor, the biggest thing is it's just so much more than that. There's so much more to TMF. It really hones in on, you know, the best foods to eat for your body. Quality is really important. And I think carb cycling kind of misses that aspect. And really importantly, um, TMF teaches you to become your own metabolic detective and just find what works for you. It's not uh, rigid like a carb cycling. 
while the 22 days are more structured post 22 days you really have this kind of rubric to to know you know when when works best for you to have a carb feast and as i mentioned just bottom line it's so much more than just carb cycling perfect and one thing that we talked about too is it also incorporates sleep and stress reduction and other things which we use a measurement called schmeck in all of our program which stands for sleep, hunger, mood, energy, cravings, um, so that you can stay in tune with your body. And that's how you know how you feel after a carb feast or when you want to continue on um, with your life and just how you're actually feeling beyond just those numbers on the scale or anything else. It gives gives you a way to um, interpret those things. Um, And I think we could just schedule, like go right into the next question. This is kind of, how do you do this after 22 days? Like what happens if it's only 22 days? what, What do you do next? Sure. And I think you really nicely just touched on Schmeck and incorporated that. Uh, But that's really going to be a huge part of moving forward. Hopefully in the 22 days, you will have already started to discover a little bit about what's really working for you, what's getting you those results and really what, what feels good to you, what tastes good to you. And then moving forward after those 22 days, some people decide to, you know, just kind of repeat it. But a lot of people start to reintroduce foods back in and kind of really use the Schmeck mechanism as we just discussed to find out what's working and then same thing with those carb feasts you know it's much less rigid it's really about checking in with your Schmeck maybe you need to incorporate more maybe you need to incorporate less but truly that the whole program once you've been through that 22 days I honestly think and maybe Laura will agree you have the tools that you need to move forward yes and make it we really believe in having a a lifestyle and not just, it's not a diet, it's a way of living. And it's just, it's, and we have people have been doing this for years yeah. um, and they, their whole lives are transforming. They have more energy, more vitality, they sleep better. And that's what it's all about. Um, I'm going to, this question is a little specific, but we actually do recommend that we talk a little bit about things like Epsom salt baths and different um, stress reduction techniques. And a lot of us don't have bathtubs and things like that. So if that is something that you're trying to incorporate, um, we do recommend it. Um, you can do like a foot soak, you can, which is like, and I give myself a pedicure afterwards. There's lots of fun little alternatives you can have. Um, and if you join the program, we have a great Facebook group and community, and they have lots of solutions and answers to all the questions that might come up. So if you have more questions after this, know that you have a community of supporters, we'd be happy to help you um, on Facebook. Um, and you get to see me there sometimes. Hi. Um, okay. So what about uh, carb feast? Car- I don't know if we have to go into this one. What about like, okay, this is a great question. What if you don't want to have a protein shake for breakfast every day? Do you have to just have shakes for breakfast on TNA? No, absolutely not. As always, this is about finding what works for you. And if you hate protein shakes, no one is forcing you to have a protein shake. There are so many ways around it. We do give a lot of suggestions. Again, in that Facebook group, there are a lot of suggestions. There's also recipes that you can follow in the book. But things like eggs are really awesome for breakfast too. I know Laura and I are big fan of eggs in the morning. Um, And there's, of course, the roll your own section. You know, breakfast doesn't have to look like eggs or a shake. You could have, you know, a steak and a salad for all I care, whatever feels and tastes good to you. But absolutely, you do not have to have a shake. It's really versatile. We have people who like to have like things that to me sound strange, like soup for breakfast. But that's what they like. And so it's about finding what you like and making it work for you um, and not what we tell you to. Um, so I think this is a very important question because this one comes up a lot. So do you, can you exercise during this 22 days, Bella, or what do we recommend? So you can, one thing that TMF really focuses on is walking and gentle exercise. I think walking is really important and don't forget that. Um, obviously you are eating differently during this first 22 days. So again, we really recommend you just listen to your body and don't push yourself like crazy because you are eating different. You are going to feel a little bit different. So as always, it's about checking in with your body and knowing your limits. Um, what do you think, Laura? You are our exercise queen. Um, so a lot of people, I really strongly just recommend taking the time for these 22 days just to focus on walking and stress reduction. Because walking can be a wonderful form of exercise. And um, we're ta- I'm talking like long, leisurely walks, not like a 15 minute. You know, <laughs> chill. Oh my gosh, that's like the worst space. I just saw myself on screen, but not that. Focusing on that, like gen- this is a great time for gentle yoga and gentle movements and maybe incorporating less. Like if you've come to us, like this actually the next question is, I can't, if I've done metabolic renewal, one of our programs yeah. um, is for me. Yes, but maybe don't do, instead of doing the burnouts and the three workouts, maybe you're going to just do one to two workouts a week and no burnout while you're on TMF and really listen the metabolic factor, listen to your body and see what, how you feel. And if you do overdo it, know, okay, I'm feeling extra tired because I did too much or I'm hungry afterwards. Yeah. Um, 
what does that mean? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a perfect summary. Again, just tapping into your body and what works for you, but definitely not pushing yourself, you know, be very mindful of that. And don't think you, you know, to experience good results, you have to like go absolutely crazy on the workouts because often that will actually cause, you know, more damage than good. Mm -hmm. And just also, if you've come from metabolic renewal, um, it's a great program to do if you're in the middle of it or you've done with it. And you can incorporate the tooth. We have a lot of people who are following their hormone type and they're starting to develop, like they really just needed to work on their diet and focus on the foods. And this has helped them get those tools and they use the two together. So all of our programs can be done together and they are synergistic um, for a lack of a better word. Um, so I have, a, this is one we get a lot. So do you have to have all these three meals? Can you skip meals or do intermittent fasting with this? What does that kind of mean? Sure. So I do recommend, and, and maybe you'll agree, Laura, for the first 22 days, I really encourage you to just try and stick to the program as much as possible. And that does mean the three meals a day. I know sometimes it's easy, say if you're someone who has been doing intermittent fasting, you're used to two meal, meals a day, it can be a little intimidating to then add a third meal and worry about results. But we say this all the time, just please trust the program and trust the progress. Like truly, this, this program does get results. And especially if you follow those 22 days as closely as you can, you will get the results that you're looking for. And then after the 22 days, you know, you can try different things. Um, maybe you do want to try intermittent fasting. Maybe you do want to take away a meal. That's absolutely fine. Again, just check in with your schmeck and just tweak as needed. Awesome. Um, this question comes up a lot, which is like, if you have a graveyard shift or you work shift work and so your schedule is different, can you do this for you? And there's a lot, I will tell you, this comes up with Dr. Johnny all the time and I've heard his opinion on it. So one of them, first, if you can, you always joke, ha ha, get a new job. But seriously, um, you, we understand you can't do that. But he says you have to just work really hard at it if that is your situation to make sure you're getting proper sleep and you can have for you, it might be your breakfast is at dinner and you have to really figure out what works for you and be your own advocate because there is no simple formula that he can give for your shift and for your body. Sure, especially as you know, all shifts, they do look very different times of day and, and things. And I think it just goes back to, you know, just as Laura said, you've got to find what works for you. If you can stick as closely as you can to those 22 days and really try and ensure you're getting adequate sleep, I think you absolutely can see success. Of course you can, but it is going to require a little bit more tweaking and, and really just, just knowing yourself um, a little bit more than, than say if you didn't have that shift. Perfect. Is this based on research, Bella? A hundred percent. Yes. If anyone actually knows Dr. Johnny or follows him or knows anything about him, he's truly evidence and research based. He really does appreciate the science and therefore his programs are also science based and awesome. And the TMF book actually contains many references that you can actually look at and check out. Um, and if you actually read the book, I'm sure you will actually know if you know anything about kind of nutrition science, that this is a hundred percent based on research. It's wonderful. Yeah. And Dr. Johnny loves to share his favorite yeah. um, that he's worked with and sources that he cites. He will talk about it all the time. So um, if you join our Metabolic Mastery Club, you'll see that information all the time. A um, little subtle plug there. <laughs> um, this question, I'm going to move to the next one. So can my family eat this way, Bella, or do I have to eat one meal and the rest of them eat something else? No, I think it's absolutely wonderful if your family eats this way. And if you can really try and get, maybe you have kids or, you know, a fussy husband like I do, um, it's actually brilliant to, to cook these meals for everyone and really try and get them to, to enjoy it too. They are just really healthful, real food dishes. So ev everyone can enjoy them. What do you think, Laura? I think so. And unfortunately, uh, Corbin, Come say hello. My child has literally escaped. It is here. When we were talking about this, say hello. We are live. Say hi. Just wave and now go. Let's go see. Thank you. I love you. Bye-bye. And that's a very healthy child right there. He is very healthy. And I would say he actually, that was really creepy timing, but um, he eats the metabolic factor way most of the time. So it is something your whole family can do. I love and it. It's actually the best question because he has food allergies <laughs> and extreme sensitivities. And so people have asked, like, can you do this program with that? Can you, and the answer is like, yes, yeah. you can just modify it for your allergies. And Bella, can you maybe can address some of the common substitutions we recommend or anything like that? Yeah, absolutely. And I will say that actually in those first 22 days, some common allergens and sensitivities are actually already eliminated from the program. So that makes things really easy, like dairy's gone, gluten's gone. And I know those are two really big ones. Um, 
we we have a lot of like dairy free cheese substitutes that we recommend there's a lot of junk out there but we do know the good stuff and again the facebook group will be really helpful if you join metabolic mastery club you will get all the deets on that um but honestly as i mentioned the the program's meals focus on real food so a lot of the allergens have already been removed but there's also the roll your own meal section so you can create the dishes that taste good and also are allergen or sensitivity free you know depending on what you're dealing with Perfect. And then is this as effective for older people and our elderly family members as it is for people, you know, like, cause they're seeing you and I talking about it and they're saying, we're saying, Whoa, we love this. But like, what about our parents and our grandparents? hundred percent. I truly believe anyone, any age can do this program. As I mentioned, it's, it's really just focusing on that real, real delicious, high quality food. And I think everyone should be eating that kind of food. So yes, definitely. What do you think, Laura? I completely agree. And I, in fact, I think the older you are, the more important it is to eat this way um, and really make sure that you're eating um, high quality foods, especially like I know a lot of elderly people I know um, have trouble with um, digestion and chewing and things like I have a family friend who's in his 90s. And so something like our smoothies and learning to make healthy shake recipes and scrambles and things is a very good alternative. Um, the next question is not the happiest of answers, but it is possible. How can you modify the menus for vegetarians? Okay, so I will say that vegetarians, I think, can absolutely still thrive on this program. Um, and also this does depend on, you know, how maybe if you're more to the vegan side or the vegetarian, but um, just some things I, I guess I would recommend definitely focus. Well, we, we've got to focus on protein, right? And you probably hear that a lot if you're a vegetarian, but <laughs> really focusing on protein. So focusing on protein shakes, we actually re even recommend the possibility of two shakes a day if you are a vegetarian or a vegan. Um, if you do do uh, whey protein, I do recommend our metabolic super protein. It's really fabulous. Um, if you do eat eggs, Hello, Corbin. I am so sorry. I have no idea why my child is loose or where my child care is. So I'm so sorry, YouTube. This is what happens when you're live. Real life though. It's awesome. um, just, yeah, just to continue on the vegetarian front, um, eggs are also a brilliant source of protein that should be utilized if you are eating them. And similarly, if you're a pescatarian, um, mm. focusing on wild caught fish is, is amazing. And then also um, nuts and seeds. There is a slight allotment in TMF you know, it's not necessarily going to provide quite as much protein as like a big protein shake, but it is something. Um, legumes and soy based protein is going to be out for the first 22 days. But again, after those first 22 days, you can consider adding them back in if they work for you. I do recommend though, always focusing on organic and sprouted um, if you can. Mm -hmm. And the last question thing is, again, I never have had this ever. I've been working from home for two and a half years. And have you ever seen my child bomb anything? No, no, no because we're live and I don't know where my child here is. So hopefully all is well. Um, the, last question, so funny. the last question is, which I could use one baby right now. I don't know. <laughs> what do I drink? Can I have a can I have alcohol on the metabolic factor, Bella? It's a great question. It's one we get asked all the time. So as I mentioned earlier, for those first 22 days, if you can try and stick to it as closely as possible, you are going to experience the best results. For those 22 days, alcohol is off the table, I'm afraid, everyone. However, post 22 days, and this is really with anything, it's up to you if you want to incorporate it back or not. I would say if you are going to incorporate alcohol, doing it in moderation is awesome. Um, and again, you know, checking in with your schmeck, maybe you're utilizing it for a carb feast day. Um, it's a, it's about finding what works for you. And if you really want to bring it back after the community days, that's something you can do, of course. I am literally appalled. I am so sorry. We are going to end this live because my child's care is missing in action. And um, we will figure out how to cut this video. So this part is never Thank you, YouTube.